Y feliz con su china siempre vivió. Después, cual bendición, su lindo hijito llegó y trajo aún más alegría a su corazón. Respiren conmigo, por favor. Quiero conectarme con ustedes sin palabras, como el tango, por un momento. No me gusta mucho este mar de separación aquí. Conexión es todo en la vida, ¿no? When I first started dancing tango, I was kind of awkward about the embrace. It was like, what's this? Who are you, random person? But over the years, I've connected with so many warm hearts. I can use my sensitivity to listen to the wordless communication. I inhale before we take our first step. And it feels like I'm opening ears all around me to catch these subtle impulses, rhythms, and timing to create this living art. No two dances are the same. We're improvising, becoming kinetic sculpture. We lean towards each other for stability, and to get better points of contact to transmit this electric frequency. And even when we're still, we're still dancing. I remember one instructor saying that the follow, my role today with Mario, is not passive, it's very active. And she had us do this exercise where we would say, Silently, I am here, I am here. Bringing ourselves again and again into this two-way sensory dialogue so we don't fade out or expect the lead to do all the work. Tango relies on this equality of intention, this synchronized togetherness. You want to appear as one fluid being, which means we both have to stay on our own axis, or if we fall, well, when we lose our balance, it's not great, but we'll survive. 
Coral reefs, on the other hand, are a lot more sensitive. And when they lose their balance, it's deadly. I mean, look at them. They're so happy. You can tell by their bright colors. These corals live in the Mesoamerican Barrier Reef. It's the second largest barrier reef in the world. It runs from Cancun to Honduras. And with the naked eye, you can't detect their two distinct species, plants and animals, living harmoniously as one. But just a slight increase, slight increase in temperature can cause the coral animal to miss a step and drop its colorful algae partner. It's coral bleaching. And I don't know why, I mean, it's its main food source, the algae is feeding the coral, but the coral's like, go, it's too hot, I just, I can't, go. And if they don't realize how much they need each other, the corals starve and die, the algae's eaten by some fish. It's a totally sad ending. They don't seem to be adapting fast enough to the threats they're facing. In the 40 years since Cancun's been developing rapidly, some native species have declined 98%. That's almost extinct. Whatever reason you love them, for their beauty, because they keep your house or hotel from washing to sea, because they make sandy beaches, or because your next ceviche has to come from somewhere. Coral reefs need more supporting partners. To counterbalance destructive human activities, we need hands-on cultivation. And thankfully, there are people planting and more resilient strains and then putting them into marine protected areas. When they're big enough in the nurseries, they put them out onto the living coral reefs or the dead reef structures. What if there are no structures? Like, what if a hurricane or dynamite fishing wiped out all the reefs? I mean, it happens a lot. And corals don't settle and grow on sandy seafloors. They're picky, or I should say complex. And they're competing for limited space and resources. So, can we, one, provide life-supporting substrate that they'll call home? Two, give them a boost to survive some of this environmental stress. And three, work with them more like partners, collaborators, to raise the bar in terms of aesthetic and functional symbiotic vocabulary for artificial reefs, for reformed reefs. Can we do this? Yes. I'm going to tell you about a process called mineral accretion. It was invented in the 70s by an architect, Wolf Hilberts, and it uses this cool combination of metal, my favorite, um, electricity, and the abundance of minerals in the sea. Usually when you put a steel structure in the ocean, it corrodes. But with mineral accretion, it actually gets stronger. Layers of the very same minerals that corals use to build their exoskeletons deposit onto the metal by electrolysis. Okay, so you're flipping on a light switch, but instead, you're powering an underwater sculpture with just a little bit of electricity. And I can't wait till we use tidal and wave energy because, I mean, it's huge, it's the ocean, it makes sense, it's powerful. Now, the sculptures, structures can be any shape or size, and no, you're not getting electrocuted. You are providing a limestone surface that corals can colonize. They've been shown to grow faster and survive some higher temperatures that often kill them. Like one study, 1998 was a record hot year, much like this year. And this study in the Maldives showed a 16 to 50 times higher survival rate on the electrified reefs compared to the neighboring natural reefs. And personally, I've worked on and observed projects in Bali go from like stickly rebar to flush with coral on these fortified forms. And I can't wait to see what we discover here in the Yucatan. I first came to Cancun in 2011 to make a living sea sculpture with this process from Musa, the underwater art museum in Isla Mujeres in Cancun. And I was so excited because I had taken that leap, you know, to do what felt most important to me, art as ecology. So rather than making art about nature, I'm making art with and for nature. It's exciting. And Musa started as this brainchild of compromise and vision. The National Marine Park wanted to close off sections of the natural reefs to tourism so that it could recover from damage. And tourism says, well, I mean, you've got to give us something. Our business depends on attraction. So their mission, art serving conservation, emerged. Jason DeCaris Taylor was invited to create and curate cement sculptures for the first underwater galleries. 
and he was here installing Anthropocene when I arrived over four years ago. And to be clear, Musa was just getting started itself back then, so they welcomed my enthusiasm to raise funds to bring this new form of art to the museum. And so I'm, I'm so grateful to over 500 sponsors from crowdfunding campaigns and private foundations. It's huge. While designing, I learned that corals and humans share similar innate immunity genes, which means that they're super distant relatives we never invite to our parties. I mean, you really should invite them to your party. But they can teach us a lot about our response to disease. They're our relatives. And depending on your interpretation, the helices of this DNA are either growing together or growing apart. Are we going to cooperate with our wild relatives or compete? So back in 2011 when I got here, I had a lot to figure out. And after some weeks in the beating sun trying to make a precise sculpture on rocky dirt, we needed a metal shop. I had seen Toto Inoxidable, a stainless steel factory, shortly after I arrived, and I called once, and we were disconnected, so I just, you know, let it go because I was getting the team together and the tools, figuring out what was and wasn't working. But as the rain started dumping down, I called again, and Guillermo kindly offered to show me a building. Nice. It was abandoned. No electricity, pools of water on the floor. Guillermo, I need to get this done in 10 days. I don't know if I was like that, but you know. And um, Toto and Oxidable was a dream. Roof, walls, floor. I appreciated every single minute of those 10, 12-hour days. And my crew was following my lead. We had this great rhythm going. I could be welding here, someone's torch cutting there. We were flowing until we weren't. One day, I went to pick them up, and they're seated around the table. I was on trial. We don't think, Colleen, we don't think you can get this done in time for a deployment tomorrow. I doubt he sounded like that, but we don't think you can get this done in time for deployment tomorrow. Shit, I mean, I felt that coming. I'd gotten up at 5 a.m. to lay out everyone's role in detail. It had to be tightly choreographed. We had to regain our balance, and I just kept assuming that this confusion clouding around permits was somehow going to blow away. I stayed focused on where I wanted to go, exerting everything I had to give, and we did it. We got her to port. But willpower wasn't enough, not for bureaucracy. I had to let go, let go, and go back to the U.S. and tell all my supporters and backers, you know, that I failed. No, but that I... I couldn't complete what I promised, and that sucked, but I wouldn't give up. I don't give up. It was two years before I returned, before I grasped the depth of the challenge. I had to stop waiting for these email contracts and invest face to face. And it was a relief to come back. And you can see on this coral core, if you can read it, some of the milestones, twists, and turns that happen while waiting for permits. I've thought of writing a book, What to Do While Waiting for Permits. And it would definitely include having Sean Hurley of Autodesk come teach us about photogrammetry for accurately monitoring coral growth in 3D. So it even shows you where corals have deteriorated or grown over time. If you go back months later, take photos of the same coral, you can run it through the program, and this is going to show you where, like, there's a regression or a growth. Que padre, no? <laughs> I love it. Um, and another milestone, very serious. Oops. Another milestone, very serious. In 2013, the sculpture was named Zoe, which means life, as a memorial to Zoe Anderson. She wanted to save and protect corals. And the DNA links her undying compassion for coral reefs with intentional regeneration. And there'll be this live stream webcam, so wherever you are in the world, you can observe, interact, and use the video for artistic visualizations. I like to bring the oceans and corals to people through interactive, immersive exhibits on land, so you can participate in solutions and appreciation, even if you never visit. I mean, even if you never swim. In a meeting last year, corals had just spawned, I like that, 
And mid-meeting, we have to turn our attention away from my permits to a controversial situation in Musa. Another artist had gone into the park without permits. Another artist had gone into the park without permits and crocheted over Jason's time bombs to make a statement about coral degradation and a call for environmental protection. Do you see the irony? Because that's what grabbed me. Two artists with very different approaches to ocean activism. Here I have been waiting over four years for permits to work with the authorities to help corals. And this just made me question what it means to be an artist. Was I being an artist? I mean, one friend once said to me, Colleen, get your sculpture in the water. What are you waiting for? <sighs> timing. Good timing. Zoe's going to be anchored to the seafloor. It requires the cooperation of a lot of people that don't usually work together, that aren't comfortable embracing each other yet. Some people call things false starts, but that's if you're racing to a finish line, and obviously that doesn't apply to growth or bureaucracy. I've learned I couldn't force bureaucracy. We have to keep building the current, connecting with people who want a healthy ocean-human interface. For future breakwaters and habitats, I imagine making abstract forms from complex geometries like how corals grow, and seascapes inspired by sound waves of music, fractals, algorithms, architecture, and activities and materials I see here down by the water every day. These will lead to reefs reformed if we move in unison with our magnificent ancestors who wordlessly breathe with us and support our every living moment. With tango, when the floor's crowded, we have to come up with moves <laughs> to dance in one place, kind of. And um, while waiting for permits, I've had to keep dancing. I have been pivoting for unexpected contracts and impact surveys, leading, then following. We just got permits from the government, and thank you. I've been, I've been here most of the year aligning with my partners, so we're ready to move, to install. Go with your partners on land and in sea. Don't muscle them around. Invite them to take the next step and go.